Aviation fuel scarcity could impact Nigerians traveling for the festive season. In a December 19th press release, the airline operators of Nigeria informed the general public of impending disruptions in scheduled flight operations due to the scarcity of aviation fuel, otherwise known as Jet A1. The body said the scarcity will force airlines to reschedule flights, leading to late, operation, late uh, operations or cancellations. The press release was signed by Professor Obiora Okonkwa, OFR, spokesman for the airline operators of Nigeria. Joining us now to discuss further is Yemi Dada, Managing Director of Haria Global Services Limited. Good morning, Yemi. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. I want to read at least one part of the press release uh, from the airline operators of uh, Nigeria, where they stated uh, that this scarcity would um, has reared its ugly head, according to them, over the uh, last few days. So there it is. Airline operators wish to inform the general public of impending disruptions in scheduled flight operations due to the scarcity of aviation fuel, otherwise known as Jet A1, which reared its ugly head again in the past few days. The scarcity will no doubt force airlines to reschedule flights, leading to late um, operations and or cancellations. So uh, why do you think we're having this issue again at this time? I mean, this is a deregulated product, so is it, it can be priced, can it? Morning, just thank you for having me on um, My feelings from the market seems to indicate that the product is actually not scarce. I think the marketers are just using the opportunity that this is one of the peak periods for the airline operators to arm twist uh, and collect so, on some previous. Uh, credits they have extended to some of the airlines. Um, airlines that are able to make payments are getting uh, supplies. So it's possible that there is some level of uh, scarcity there, but it's masked by the fact that the operators are able to provide the product uh, against uh, prompt payment. Wow. So that's uh, uh, the, the timing couldn't be worse. How, how disruptive um, could this be ahead of the you know, Christmas over the over the weekend? It could be very, very disruptive. Uh, this is one of the busiest uh, weekends we have in the year. And I, I think the, the, the 12 marketers understand that and uh, using it as leverage. If we have less flights as a result of this, with the festive season demand being high, doesn't that mean prices for tickets, which already would be high for this period, this would skyrocket further? Uh, I'm not sure it will affect prices. Like you said, prices are already uh, reflective of the demand in this period. Uh, and in actual fact, there's been a, a lot of supply of uh, sits in the market in anticipation of the demand and so there's been some leveling out of uh, pricing in the market so i'm not i'm not sure this will reflect uh, in any more higher prices okay well that's that's got the good news there i guess we'll see how things play out there um speaking of ticket prices recently we've seen dana air and aero contractors uh, returning to the skies in the long run i guess maybe after this busy period can we see more competitive pricing for tickets going forward, at least domestically? There's, there's always been competitive pricing uh, since the fares have been given for many years. Um, of course, as we come off this high season, uh, in Nigeria, January is a typical low season for air traffic uh, after the festive period. So necessarily, the pricing of the tickets will reflect the demand for that period. And you might see that uh, beginning to inch up again uh, after the elections and towards Easter. Mm. Is there any other strategy for airlines to address these higher fuel costs other than raising tickets? Because I think this is the, now the third, second or third time now we're, we're talking about scarcity of Jet A1. How can they augment that in your view beyond raising fares? There's, there's nothing the airline operators can do. It's an impute to their costs. Uh, the only the good news we have is that the government has indicated that the Port Harcourt refinery, which is one of the refineries that 
uh, used to provide us with jet fuel in the past will be coming on stream at the end of the year, the first quarter of next year. Uh, we're also looking at the Dangote refinery uh, coming on stream. And that, if not anything, will remove the cost of transporting imported jet fuel and delays occasioned by uh, having to go through quality control, uh, and Navy and customs clearing of the high sea before product is offloaded. So that might be a, a bit more, uh, that would be better supply and more efficiency when these uh, two things happen. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because still on this refinery matter, and it, a number of people have mentioned it. Do, do you think it would make a difference in price? Because I guess what you mentioned inputs cost. One of the inputs is that it's still crude oil prices. So if uh, Putin has said that the war in Ukraine will continue into next year. So if, if there's still a spike in oil prices, even with domestic refining, doesn't that account for the majority of the cost and wouldn't prices still be high for fuel since it's deregulated? Um, like I said, for example, for the Dangote refinery, you are not importing product from, say, South America or Europe, and that would at least remove the cost of transportation and some cost of demerit that used to go in there when the ship arrived and, and has to go through processes before the product is, is offloaded. Uh, for the government refinery, uh, the government could actually still provide the uh, refinery crude at much lower prices to uh, reflect uh, a local consumption arrangement that will reduce the, the amount of the product. So in some ways we will get some savings. It may not be that significant way to be cheaper than importing from the clients where we currently get product from. All right. Well, look, I will, we'll see the Potaka refinery, we understand, should be partially coming on stream by the end of this year. Dangote refinery, hopefully next year, we'll, we'll see how things play out. I want to ask you about taxes and fees. On domestic tickets, some of them actually make up more, the bulk of the cost of a domestic fare than the, um, the actual ticket fare itself. Is there any chance at all that government entertains augmenting those taxes and fees that make up the cost of flying? Well, I, I, I don't think that is actually correct. I think the reflection on the, uh, the breakdown of the fares by most airlines are not accurate. Um, a lot of the, the fares are percentages of the fare. The, a lot of the taxes and charges uh, are percentages of the fares. And once it's a, it's a ratio, you cannot get, unless it's like 100%, or 200 percent of the fare it shouldn't be higher than, than the fare and then the fixed amounts are actually much lower than fares that have been charged and uh, so it's it's for the, the market regulator which is the NCA to sit with the airlines and allow them to uh, streamline the publication of their fares so that it shows the reality of what is computed uh, for the journey and whatever add-ons that they have there before they then add the taxes and charges. But the taxes and charges cannot be higher than, than the first. They are not, definitely not. Uh, uh, Duly noted. Um, you mentioned the NCA, Civil Aviation Authority. There's the there's FAN, uh, Federal Airports, uh, the regulator there. Um, do we have too many regulators um, or do we have enough as far as, the, or, is, or does the safety of the aviation industry justify you know, the number of regulators that we have? Well, in terms of the, the actual numbers of regulators that we have, uh, we are following an international standard, and that's why we are qualified by KO and the FA in the categories that we are in. Um, in terms of the number of employees for some of the for the agency, some parts are, are understaffed and some parts are, are overstaffed. Uh, FAN is not a regulator; it's a player in the market and uh, hopefully when the concessioning of major airports is done, the burden of the, the personnel there will transfer to the concessionaires and they might decide to repurpose the staff, employ more or retrench depending on what the business model demands. 
All right, brother, by a minute left, what's your outlook for the aviation sector uh, next year? The aviation sector in Nigeria has always been strong since the uh, For so many reasons, including the fact that we have some challenges with the road uh, transportation, rail transportation has actually not picked up enough to provide uh, connectivity in the manner that it should be seamless. And so the, the thing that is still being sold by the airline, which is speed, and uh, the insecurity that you avoid on the roads continues to drive demand for the aviation sector in Nigeria. This is not going to change. And um, when you're looking at a new administration uh, coming in after the election, that will also account for quite a lot of movement. Uh, as many states governments are, are going to change, many uh, the federal level also, the president will definitely change. And, uh, new senators, new house of reps, uh, people will keep on uh, moving and that will uh, provide uh, an adequate market. Mr. Yemi Dada, Managing Director, Harrier Global Services Limited. Always a pleasure uh, talking to you about the aviation sector. Thank you so much for joining us.